Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Ahsoka update. Today we have some very interesting Star Wars news, we're gonna start with some speculation, some new concept art which reveals connections to Ezra Bridger, so no more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into this. The fight scenes in Ahsoka look like they're going to be very intense, and I've not seen this mentioned before, but I think there are going to be some pretty emotional stakes with some of them. We know that one of the times Balin fights Ahsoka, he brings up Anakin, and that's really something they have in common. Both Balin and Ahsoka survived Order 66, but they went down different paths. We know that both Balin and Ahsoka know that Anakin turned into Darth Vader, he turned to the dark side, and now that Ahsoka knows Luke, she probably knows that Anakin turned back to the light. His Force ghost probably speaks to her. But does Balin know? He talks about the path Anakin went down, he says few knew what he became. But does Bela know he turned back to the light, and is that going to be important? Now the primary reason I bring up emotional stakes is because in some of the new footage, when Ahsoka is fighting Morocco, it seems to be very passion driven, and in the same way that in The Rise of Skywalker both Rey and Kylo Ren accidentally destroy Vader's helmet, Ahsoka and Morocco are fighting so hard they both destroy the HK-87 in between them. They're not teaming up, of course, they're adversaries, but it gets so heated that they end up just slashing away, and I wonder if there are words shared beforehand. Could this play into the theory that once upon a time, Maroc was someone Ahsoka knew? Maroc was an Inquisitor for the Empire, and before that, Maroc might have been a Jedi that Ahsoka came across as a Padawan. It's a really fun detail from the trailer that I don't think should be read in too, too deeply, but that being said, I don't think Maroc is trying to destroy the droid, one of his own, one of Morgan Elsbeth's guards. And in some of the new concept art for the Jedi Temple in this show, we see the Zepho. These were referenced in the Bad Batch Season 2, they come from Jedi Fallen Order. It looks as though Dave Filoni's gonna do some kind of deep dive into Star Wars lore, which comes as no surprise. The Zepho were an ancient sentient species native to the planet by the same name. Many Zephonians could wield the Force, and they were known to be wise sages. They were often referred to as Lifewind. Originating as a very peaceful and calm civilization, over time they became more and more corrupt, eventually falling to the dark side of the Force. Facing extinction, the remnants of the Zephonians fled to the unknown regions of the galaxy, what they called the Great Unknown, in the hopes of finding peace. It's interesting that they keep coming up, whether it's in Jedi Fallen Order, Jedi Survivor where they were mentioned, The Bad Batch, The High Republic, and now, The Ahsoka Show. Ahsoka's been traveling the galaxy. Did she find Jedi temples along the way? What knowledge has she accrued? What breadcrumbs has she been following? And I think the whereabouts and activities of Thrawn and his minions are gonna help to answer this. Now, inadvertently, these pieces of concept art by Matt Olsop seem to solve a strange mystery about the Mandalorian Season 2 in regards to Tython and Grogu. What if the reason Ahsoka told Grogu to go to Tython is because that was one of the locations she went to to try and reach out in the Force to Ezra? We know that both her and Sabine are about to set off to find their friend, but we don't know if when Ahsoka was looking for Thrawn, she was also going about her own means to finding Ezra, to connect to him through the Force from these different temple locations. And just like Tython the Seeing Stone may have been one of them, so too might have been this new one from the concept art, and maybe other Force users like Balin, Shin, and Maroc could sense that in order to track her down and find her. Just a theory, but I think it holds up well with how she knew about Tython, than all the same, but different locations that she visited. It's the first time we've seen this concept in high quality, and I'm starting to think that just like Luke did after episode 6, Ahsoka in the same time period has done some serious research on the history of the Jedi. It's possible Ahsoka went to this temple after going to Tython. She may have been unsuccessful on both planets, Tython and wherever this is. Now, on the subject of Grand Admiral Thrawn, I put out a community poll asking how much of Thrawn you think we're going to see in the show. There was a wide array of answers, but I'm going to say he's probably just going to make a brief appearance at the end, in the final episode. The show is really about what's leading to the great threat, the threat he poses to the known galaxy. We've only seen a couple of frames, and aside from the secrecy aspect, it also signals to me that both him and Ezra might just appear in episode 8, setting up something bigger to come. And so now, my dear friends, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Deborah Chow once again has opened up about the possibility of season 2, this time saying it is not out of the question, but it does seem very unlikely. Ewan McGregor says he has many ideas for it, but Deborah says that it's not something Lucasfilm is taking seriously at this point. With all of the revamping going on, I don't know if this is ever going to happen. With an increasing love for the prequel trilogy as the years go by, despite some fans not liking season 1, there has been a lot of intrigue surrounding a second season. Whether it's seeing Hayden Christensen return despite the fact that he's an Ahsoka and that's going to be amazing, I think. There's him, Ewan McGregor, and of course Liam Neeson as Qui-Gon Jinn's Force Ghost. 
Some want to see more of that interaction, but in my opinion, it might be a better idea to just let things be, leave these characters alone, let the time period between now and A New Hope stand as we know it, where Obi-Wan is in the desert. He's rescued Leia, and now he's fulfilling his commitment and promise to watch over Luke as he's being raised by his aunt and uncle. The story of Kenobi changed a few times in production, and there's been a lot of dismay over the way Joby Harold and Deborah Chow treated these characters. But despite this, there is a large segment of the fandom who does want to see more of this show, and in a new interview with The Hollywood Reporter, she said the toughest challenge was to crack in a new story between the trilogies. She says, quote, You're between these two trilogies with these huge, iconic characters. Everybody knows what happened to them before and after. And you're starting with a character where the public perception is that he should be sitting on a rock for 20 years. But those 20 years, in between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope, had so much to explore on an emotional level. She didn't want to go the Legends Kenobi route, she didn't want to do Obi-Wan just on Tatooine, exploring things with the Tusken Raiders, which was originally what fans believed to be the story after Episode 3. Instead, they explored the Jedi path, they explored planets like Dayu, we saw more of Princess Leia, and it's a different story to the one that fans expected, very much like when the prequel trilogy came out. It subverted fan expectations. And then she says, I don't think anyone will ever know exactly what George Lucas intended, or what the intention was with some lines. And she's specifically referencing Alec Guinness as Obi-Wan Kenobi, telling Luke in episode 6, what I told you was true from a certain point of view. She said it was a way to have bridged things after a retcon or a change in the story has occurred. And that inspired her to do more, to more freely interpret some of those characters with a focus on emotional authenticity. I'm not too sure how I feel about this, but she finishes by saying that Ewan had so many ideas for a second season. At the end of the final scene, the final scene they shot, he was already pitching her ideas from the set. I just don't think they're going to do a second season, at least not for a long time. The story has to warrant it, and I don't want them to explain every single activity he did before A New Hope. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. And I do think it's worth pointing out with all of these comments made by Deborah Chow, especially when you're touching George Lucas's characters and you're talking about their stories before some very important films, naturally fans feel a bit skeptical. They feel as though you either shouldn't touch them or at least get the story right. It didn't sit well with a lot of fans. And so now in Lego news, Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga continues to top the charts. It is a widely popular game and on the subject of Lego Star Wars, we have a brand new look at the minifigures including in the new upcoming Ahsoka set, the New Republic Ewing vs Shin Hattie Starfighter. Thanks to the YouTube channel JB Spielwarren, we have an up-close look at each of them. They look magnificent, especially Shin. They've gone all out on this and I can't wait to pick up this set myself. Six days to go guys, and the early screeners and reviews happen today, so I will keep you updated and I will talk about those in tomorrow's video. If you enjoyed this one, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you tomorrow. May the force be with you, always.